morning everyone, this is Bob Martin with rcsub.com and the Nautilus Dry Docks and wanted to introduce you to my next diversionary project. Uh, this is a uh, Russian Akula class model. The owner sent it to me because he was having some issues uh, getting it finished up and uh, most of it revolves around some alignment issues and now I'm sure you can see it here, we've got a quarter inch gap at the front of the boat, uh, we've got a huge gap all the way underneath the hull here. Um, the good news is it looks like the rear linkages were done really well. We got nice uh, tight fit, some really good tolerances on the rudders uh, and dive planes. When it arrived, the uh, top uh, plane here was cracked, and so I've I've repaired that. Uh, with some CA. The kit is absolutely uh, beautiful and I'll put the link up where you can purchase this kit if you're interested. This is the watertight cylinder that was supplied to me uh, by the owner to install. This is an older style d &E miniatures uh, 3.5 inch diameter watertight cylinder. It's got a geared uh, Grautner motor. Uh, I'm going to supply some servos uh, speed controller, all the radio gear, nice big ballast tank, it's a gas style ballast tank. Um, this is probably my favorite part of the whole model, just an absolutely gorgeous uh, brass scimitar propeller that will go on the, the back end there. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is uh, addressing the alignment issues. Um, basically the lower hull is is sucked in, the outer hull is pushed out. Uh, I need to get everything straightened up uh, and then I will move on to putting in some bulkheads and installing the watertight cylinder. Alright, let's take a look at the solution that I've come up with to uh, try and get everything aligned. Um, obviously with this being uh, you know, a, an epoxy fiberglass hull we got some waves and, and such just from this model sitting. It's, it's laid up absolutely beautiful in epoxy resin, um, but just over time it's, it's warped. And so we've got to get that all straightened out. Now the previous owner had some bulkheads uh, glued in. I've retained the one in the back because it looks like that is uh, in the correct position and of the correct size. But the other two that were in there, um, unfortunately, were not. They were of different sizes and that's why he was getting a lot of issues. So yank those out, empty hull, we've got a perfectly square uh, piece of plastic that I have uh, just set in place there and what I'm going to do, I'm going to tack it uh, just with some CA glue on the four corners just to hold it in place while I monkey around with the uh, hull and apply heat. So that's the next step, I'm going to uh, glue that, put the top hull on, we'll see what we have to work with. Okay, the uh, interior bulkhead was uh, glued in place, the temporary one that I showed you earlier. Um, and now you can see that uh, things are starting to shape up. You know, we, we've got a, a lot more flush uh, finish along the side of the boat here. If I just apply a little bit of pressure, uh, you can see it tighten right up, which is, uh, you know, what we're going for. And, and you know the good news is is that um, you know some of the earlier boats the uh, the lower hull would have been painted red uh, for testing purposes before it would have been shipped out. We can always do that, which means this demarcation line uh, will be less important. Um, but the, uh, the the operational boats were all black, at least as as far as my information uh, shows me. So we'll we'll see what that uh, ends up working like. But for now, I'm really happy with the uh, the seam and as it coming. So. Next step is going to be to clamp these uh, hulls down and then we are going to apply some heat with the heat gun and let that epoxy relax into its new shape so that when I release the clamps uh, it'll retain the proper form.